evil phrase tune him out has now been in in in, in the dialogue uh, yep. do you have any in any feel in your mind that that has happened i don't think so um and i say that because when you listen to the players there hasn't been any signs of that um normally you can get you can get a feel talking to the players and I, it's it's tough it's tough to cover a team when you're not there every day right well, and I, I, it's 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 a lot harder to get a feel for where things are when when Kyrie during that season when everything went wrong you walked into the gym you walked into the locker room and you knew something was just off and and you could feel it you could feel it the way guys interacted you could feel it when you were at practice you could just feel it that that something was very wrong there. That that team was not enjoying itself, was not together. It's harder for me to get a feel um, because I'm not there. But but I, I would say that most of the guys, for the, they're echo, they're still echoing the things Stephen said. Um, what, the ball movement, he, he's preached ball movement. It hasn't happened. But I think that's more a, a factor of the players on the court. Like you, like you said. Their three best players, Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown, in whatever order, are scorers, and and they're not great passers, and they don't have even like a Marcus Saul type big man where you can cut and he's going to find cutters. They don't have that. They don't have really an elite pick and pop big man like a lot of teams have to space space the court, and so they're missing some of the pieces of of a, a very good offense, I think. And when you look at Stevens, I think the the one thing that kind of pops out about his teams that they have consistently been missing, and I, I'm not sure it's all his fault. I'm pretty sure it's not his fault, all his fault. But they rarely get points in the paint. They rarely draw free throws. And and that's been a pattern dating back to his first season. I think some of that is, is on the personnel. You look, Kyrie Irving was never a guy that, thought out contact Al Horford wasn't so some of their best players haven't been that but I think it's gotten to the point where it's concerning and possibly a factor of his offensive system that they don't put enough pressure on the rim and, and that they don't put guys in position to to draw free throws and get to the free throw line and get some of those easiest points and that I think has been that would be where I would start with a criticism of Brad Stevens if I were looking well, at this Celtics team, you know, I, I think part of the problem again is, is you've got a system that's so reliant on shooting the three and you don't have great three point shooters. You don't have enough of them. Like you've got streaky, some guys who can make threes like Jalen at times can make that corner three consistently, but he's not a great shooter. You know, like Kemba's not a great shooter. We know that he's, he's been streaky his whole life. He, you know, last three games, he's been pretty good from three. Before that, no, he, he was obviously he's coming back from the injury. So I, I think part of the problem for me is Brad Stevens, honestly, unwillingness a little bit to adapt and say, my personnel doesn't fit necessarily the style that I want to play and have played. So I've got to change a little bit and we're not going to jack as many threes. But but here's the thing. If, if you don't jack threes, where what do you – do because they don't have a a great like post up for they don't have a Joel Embiid to right. to be a a half court offense where they're going to throw it into it. like you don't want to do that with Tristan Thompson you don't want to do that with Daniel Tice you don't want to do it with Robert Williams. Um, you got to try so to it, get up and down now that you've Kemba. You got to try to yeah, get up. And down. Yeah, and and the pace that's another thing that you look at the stats and their pace is very slow and and the their three best players again Kemba. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, they're all guys that should be out in transition, should be out making plays. Yep. And and I think it'll make things easier when, when they do. But so but then again, like they're playing too big a lot of the time because they don't have any backup wings. And we've seen this Brad is he started last night, Javante Green and Shemi Ojala. And amazing. And he's he started Carson Edwards. He has started a bunch of guys. He started Jeff T. He start. He starts guys. It goes back to what you started with, Jay. It goes back yeah. ultimately. Your first comments were there's not enough talent around the top three guys, and and number three right now isn't really what he normally is. So I agree. I think you have to wait 
judge him when Kemba gets healthy, probably after the all-star break is when it's, it's, it's fair to judge uh, this team. But, you know, is some of this on Danny Ainge? Obviously, because he's put this team together, Bob. And right now they don't look like they fit. And they certainly don't look like they fit with the way that Brad Stevens wants to play. And he did uh, uh, own up. Basically, you know, I mean, for, if you take it at base value, you know, I'm just saying he, he uh, opened up and, and he was asked the questions by by uh, and, and he in the Herald headline was blame me. And and, uh, you know, so he's saying it. OK, but it's all it all adds up to every individual fans patience quote patience uh, uh, quotient, you know, uh, a, a realistic measure, whatever, you know, and, and it's. The too much is always hanging out there with the Boston Celtics about championship driven and all that. And I, 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 I shudder when I hear that nonsense uh, because there's so many variables that go into winning, as we all know. You know, I love pointing out certain teams that have been in this league 50 years have never won. You know, for example, the Atlanta Hawks, uh, last, St. Louis won in 58 and the Hawks haven't won since. You know, um, that's a long time, folks. And they've had some pretty good teams along the way at times, not this one, but they've had some, you know, and I, we can find other examples of teams that have, that have never won. Uh, and, and the, uh, you know, it's 50, we're in the 51st year of the incarnation of the Buffalo Braves, uh, San Diego uh, Clippers, Los Angeles Clippers, you know, they're looking for number one. And this is their 52nd year of existence. It isn't easy to win folks. It's not. It's and, not. And, you gotta, and the Celtics have been historically very lucky about certain t uh, opportune things that happen. The opportunity to get Bill Russell, the opportunity to get Dave Cowens. When they fit one win difference between them and the Cincinnati Royals, and they might not have gotten Dave Cowens, okay? Uh, and, of course, Bird, you know, turning out to be even better than anyone ever dreamed, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm saying is I'm patient. I, I'm, I'm not greedy. I'm just talking about the Red Sox. I don't want to hear all this nonsense about the Red Sox. The, the, uh, you know, four championships since 2004. I'm a happy camper, okay? I don't expect to win every year. But people's expectations sometimes get to me, uh, you know, too, you know, yeah, just too grandiose. Yep. I'm not ready to, I'm disappointed. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I hate it. I watched that game last night. It wasn't enjoyable. You know what I mean? It's a basketball fan. It wasn't well. What was enjoyable was watching Trey Young. Uh, that was enjoyable. He is fun to fan. watch. I mean, boy, I, I, I mean, I've been on his case since I saw him in Oklahoma the first time. I remember he had one thirty-seven point game one day that was phenomenal, something. And I've been so I've been a fan of his. But uh, that, that that's enjoyable. You know, nice to have a player like that. You know, well, we, we've had our share over the years. That's all I'm saying. And, <laughs> One more thing, Jay. Talk about the um, not go, you're not getting to the free throw line, um, which has definitely been the truth the whole time. You know, he, we hear about this every year. But when Tatum was a rookie, wasn't the most overtly wonderful thing about him was the way he got to the basket with that incredible first step. I thought, and and, and I just still think that ought to be the number one thing in his game. Yeah, and I think I think it's it's been harder for him since then because I mean, if you look at that team. Everyone was loading up on Kyrie Irving. Everyone was loading up on Al Horford, and he was the third option. Yeah, and were. Were. it's gotten progressively tougher on him. And and now instead of, you know, attacking closeouts and and being single covered all the time, he he's got a full defense looking at him. And I, I think that's another piece where the the lack of shooting hurts. The Celtics, I think they're they're near the the they're in the bottom ten of the league in three point attempts even though Tatum and Brown have shot fantastically from behind the arc and, and it, it just shows, shows you there's not enough spacing on the court. And, and so I, I think if, if they could get another shooter, another two shooters, that would really help those guys. And well, I think. But I drafted Nesmith and, and, yeah. uh, and it still might happen. I mean, you know, it's with, with him, of course. I mean, my God, we're talking two months in his career, two months in his career. Not saying, but it's what, that's right. They, they, did something that they seldom do and, and, and which is drafted for a need. Right. That was a need. Turns out that the, that the benefit they're getting from the draft is the other guy, which, you know, which uh, has, has been a, a very pleasant bonus, as you said. And I, I just think he's going to continue to get better and better. I just don't see why he won't, as he, as he has a feel for the league, as time goes on, and Pritchard won't be a, I think he's going to be a solid player for a long time. I, I really yeah, I like Pritchard a lot. I mean, 
like I said earlier, and like you said, they their bench would be really lost without him. He, he's oh. been that important, and I, I think that's kind of shows you how, how little they've gotten from some of their other pieces, especially Teague. But, yeah, Neesmith, I, I think his energy has been fantastic. He, he's out there, and he gives the energy that, that sometimes it seems like the, the team is missing right now. He's diving on the floor. He's hustling everywhere. Yeah. Doesn't really know what's going on yet. The game still needs to slow down for him. He still needs to find that shot, and I think he will find that shot. He, you talk to guys from when he was in high school, from when he was in college, and they just talk about how ridiculous a shooter he is. So I think that will come along. I, I think the – the defense that he's shown and the energy he's shown is, is actually pretty promising. I mean, he hey, here, a- here's a quote. Can I read you a quote from a player that played the Celtics recently? I'm going to read you a couple quotes. I'm not going to say who it was, obviously. But I was asking him last night a little bit of his thoughts of the Celtics. And he said, uh, Tatum and Brown can't be your superstars and only do things that help their game. They don't get anyone else easy shots. All they know how to do is score doesn't help the Kemba. Uh, Kemba doesn't help their center. They don't help anyone either. They don't turn down tough shots to get another guy an easy shot. So teams are on to them. That's basically what he said. Teams are on to them, load up on those two and live with them taking long twos. And that's what you're seeing. Like, again, like you said, Jay, what are they doing? Tatum gets by one guy. He's got two more waiting for him. Same thing. That was with a good scouting report. Whoever you were talking to, that, that was a smart <laughs> scouting report. Well, it's it's not that hard to figure, right? It's not that hard yeah. to figure, but to hear it from a player that that played against them, that knows them, that obviously they had a scouting report going into that game. It, it, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Thank you.